Cloudcroft, New Mexico. David Schlegel is a cosmologist from the University of California at Berkeley. When he first came to town, the map of the universe was almost empty. What we wanted to do was something much more ambitious and actually get a map of the million brightest galaxies on the sky. The task required measuring the distance and therefore the red shift for every single one of these galaxies. Obviously, you need to look at more than one galaxy at a time, so that's the trick. And if you were a futurist, you'd say, well, it's the 1990s, we have computers and we have robots. The folks designing the Sloan, though, decided to take the pragmatic approach and say, well, we actually want this thing to work. <laughs> Instead of robots, the ingenious system they came up with required a far more human touch. And they would have to go around the universe twice. It's really doing two maps of the sky. The first time around, they didn't measure any red shifts. The telescope simply took photographs. A map of the sky, but in two dimensions only. It doesn't give the distance to each galaxy yet. We actually have, from those images, not very much idea of where these things are in three-dimensional space. So at some level, it's just a pretty picture. But the next stage was the trick. They printed the images in metal. Each of these holes corresponds to our two-dimensional location of a galaxy on the sky, where if I look at this hole, we have the longitude in this coordinate, the latitude in this coordinate, and so the whole design of the system is to, as efficiently as possible, get the light from that one galaxy into that specific hole. The plug-in team from town connected every galaxy with a fiber optic cable, then put the plate back over the telescope. The second time around, the telescope measures the red shifts for these specific galaxies alone. 1,000 galaxies on a plate, nine plates a night, and one million galaxies in total on a map crafted by human hands. The Sloan survey is one of the great achievements of precision cosmology. Redshift measures the distance, the third and final coordinate for every galaxy to make a 3D movie on a colossal scale. Maybe you've seen things like this in the opening of Star Trek or Star Wars or whatever, and, and that all looks great, but it's not real. This movie, it is the real universe. Every point of light on the map is a galaxy like the Milky Way. Cosmologists can now see at a glance how the galaxies are arranged in space. So what these maps let us do is it really allows us to test all the forces of nature that we know about. There is structure really on all scales. The galaxies are not just placed at random. They're bound together by gravity in a vast cosmic web. This goes on and on. And in fact, up to the largest scales that we can see, you can still trace these structures of galaxies. But the most surprising discovery is what can't be seen. Most of the universe is missing. Modern cosmology needs a new kind of map. Because most of the universe is hiding in the dark. We don't know what dark matter is because it's never been detected on Earth. 
We know it must be out there because its gravity is holding the cosmic web of galaxies together. But we can't see it because it doesn't give off light. Someone has to find it and put it on the map. British astronomer Richard Massey is a master of the invisible. He's a member of a team hunting for dark matter based at the California Institute of Technology. So he frequently flies to Los Angeles. When you're flying over America at night, you see these crisscrossing lanes of streetlights spread out across the continent. There's obviously some, some interesting stories going on down there in between these roads. In fact, most of the story of what's going on in America is actually happening in those empty spaces that you can't see. Richard's task is like mapping those apparently empty spaces. It's as if whole cities were hiding in the dark. It takes imagination to find your way in a dark universe. You have to dream up new ways to detect what can't be seen. One possibility is that if dark matter doesn't give off light, maybe it absorbs light. Ordinary matter, the stuff that we're made out of, casts a shadow because it absorbs light. So we can see the ordinary matter in silhouette. Unfortunately, dark matter doesn't give itself away that easily. Light just goes straight through it. The secret to mapping dark matter that you can't see is to look at the light that you can see. Everything that has mass, including dark matter, actually bends the fabric of space and time that we live in. And if space is warped, then everything in it is distorted, even the paths of light rays. The only way that dark matter might reveal itself is through gravity. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, all matter distorts space, causing light to change direction. The idea of general relativity bending space and time and deflecting rays of light sounds really complicated, but actually you see light rays bending all the time. When you look into a swimming pool and see that your legs aren't in the right shape, uh, you know that there must be some water in the way. The distortion of the light depends on water ripples in the pool, which in turn depend on where the swimmers are at any one moment. The survey team went looking for dark matter in exactly the same way with a thousand hours of observations on the Hubble Space Telescope. By looking at distant galaxies halfway across the universe, by looking at their shapes and the distorted images that we see of those, we can work out what ripples there are in space between them and us. And those ripples in space are caused by the dark matter. 